I just want to say good morning to you all and um, just a real blessing to see everyone. Just really appreciate efforts that people put in to, to be here and to make this happen, that we can meet again. And of course, the greatest appreciation is to the Lord Jesus, God the Father himself, how that he um, how did he draw he it's it's yet another one in his so we just have many things um Time for prayer and prayer requests, and then have some scriptures to read and maybe some thoughts to share. But um, is there any prayer requests? Okay, let's stand and pray. <clears throat> oh God, Father of heaven and earth and all creation, and the Maker of all things, and to you we pray, and we just want um, you to hear us and. We want to hear you, and we want that relationship this morning. Um, we just want to pray on behalf of these prayer requests. just want to mention those that are sick, and Dwayne's children and his family, and just lift them up to you and help them, give them the strength they need to go through this. And just help us all to go through our trials patiently and to endure this, endure the, the spiritual battles that come our way and that want to um, overtake us at times, but help us just to remember that you have the victory and that in you we we can find refuge and that we can find our salvation in you. And, and we thank you for that. Help us now today as we read your scriptures and we look into your word and that we can be taught, that we can be taught, just that we can be lowly and humble servants of you and of one another. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> I want to read in a... Um, well, I guess it's a, a very precious letter for all of us. And uh, maybe I'll make a little guessing game out of it. It's a father writing to his son. We hold this letter very dearly. And anyone can guess what it might be. A father to his son. Huh? No, not quite. Right. Paul to Timothy. I know it's not the father and son we think of right away, but it's... I'm just using his terminology to describe it, but... So I was I was blessed when Walter Jr. read First Timothy here whenever a couple of weeks or months ago, and just how I was able to let it soak in and um, just blessed by it. Second Timothy has a little less to it, and I, I think if I get started, we can get through it in a timely manner and just read read the whole epistle. I uh, just to set some uh, groundwork. This would be. If I understand this right, this would be Paul writing from prison to Timothy. And um, Timothy, if I understand right, was, was left in Ephesus at some point, possibly at this point. Timothy would be in Ephesus and he would be there with an order to set straight things that were getting pretty unruly, I guess. And that's not good, but... But anyhow, that was the setting of things. And that's how it goes, how I just was reminded how uh, Paul commended the Ephesians and in Ephesians when he wrote to them, which must have been an earlier letter because there he was, at least one little phrase, really commended them for their, their faith and, the, and their, uh, you know, how that they are not deterring from it. But then it does seem like 
um, a little later, perhaps according to historians, Ephesians would have been written in maybe 6, 80, 60 or 61, and then we come to the time of Timothy, that was just a, a few years later, and the report sounds to be a little bit different about about Asia um, and Ephesians. Like the, the Ephesians had all forsaken Timothy, and and then we, you know, our mind goes to that that passage in Revelations where the the churches are being um, addressed by Jesus Himself, and there it does doesn't sound too good for the Ephesians either. Um, a lot of what he has to say there in Revelations about Ephesians really is pretty good, how they withstood evil people. Um, what all else did they do? But they just simply missed that one point. It was their first love. And I don't, I don't know, maybe that that first love is is tied in with what we read here. Um, in here, if I remember right, it was this one I'm about to read is where all Asia, which would include Ephesus, had forsaken Paul. Like they had not given him any any uh, recognition. They had not really really uh, taken the time or, or tried to communicate with him or whatever. And, and maybe that was the first love that's talked about in Revelations. So I, I plan to just read it through and maybe I have a few more points to make, but this is the New Living Translation. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. I have been sent out to tell others about the life he has promised through faith in Jesus Christ. I am writing to Timothy, my dear son. May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. Timothy, I thank God for you. The God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again, for I remember your tears as we parted. And I will be filled with joy when we are together again. I'm just blessed how... Um, Paul, Paul declared that he, he serves God with a clear conscience. And, and that's a good thing. He, he also had commended, commanded or commanded Timothy here in 1 Timothy to keep a clear conscience. Let's see if I can find that one. Quick, 1 Timothy 1.18. Um, verse 9, 19 would say it. Cling to your faith in Christ. Keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their conscience. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. Hymenaeus and Alexandria are two examples. Anyhow, so, so it seemed like Paul, Paul keeping a clear conscience was, was a good thing that he would do himself and, and um, command Timothy to do it. Verse 5, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know <clears throat> that same faith continues strong in you. That is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. Sorry, I'm saying that. Timidity, timidity, thanks, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about, about our Lord, and don't be ashamed of me either, even though I'm in prison for him. With the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the same sake. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserve it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. And now he has made all of this plain to us by the appearing of Jesus Christ, our Savior. He broke the power of death and illuminated the way of life and immortality through the good news. And God chose me to be a preacher, an apostle, 
and a teacher of this good news. So Paul was a, a preacher and a teacher, and he was an apostle. Um, I mean, you, you hear him putting that label on himself, but it, I think more like it, that it was, it was something that uh, others recognized that, as well. It was not just something that he himself um, declared himself to be an apostle and, you know, with, without... Um, like there's places also where he talks about co-workers and fellow workers. He he wasn't an apostle in the way that he that that people today might want to look at some of those positions and think of it as human authority. And, but he was a preacher and a teacher. <clears throat> I think of a preacher as one that he's a herald. Like he goes out and he he heralds the good news of God and for repentance like John the Baptist and Jesus is there there are prime examples of preachers a true heralds de declaring um, the way of God and um, just had to think of that um, like when Jesus then sent his disciples out that same pattern was was there as well like go out preaching the good news of the gospel and then um, there in Luke 10, it's described how, what they're supposed to take and what not to take. And, and if you find the man of peace, um, stay there. And, and it's like, to me, it's like that's then when the teaching starts. Like that's then when, when you start, you know, when the teaching starts where there's something more than just a declaration of a, what a herald would do. That is why I'm not a... That is why I am suffering here in prison. But I am not ashamed of it, for I know the one in whom I trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until the day of his return. Hold on to the pattern of wholesome teaching you learned from me, a pattern shaped by the faith and love that you have in Christ Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. Carefully guard the precious truth that has been entrusted to you. As you know, everyone from the province of Asia has deserted me. Even Fletus, Flecus, no, I'm saying that wrong, Hermogenes. How the Lord showed, may the Lord show special kindness to, to one for us and all of his family because he often visited and encouraged me. He was never ashamed of me because I am in chains. When he came to Rome, he searched everywhere until he found me. May the Lord show him special kindness on the day of Christ's return. And you know very well how helpful he was in Ephesus. I think these couple of verses is, is where I got my points. I was mentioning earlier how how things were things were de degrading a little bit there in Asia, and in in Ephesus especially. Um, there was a good work that started there. Paul commended it in in the the letter to the Ephesians, and then now some years later, not many years either, it seemed to be digressing. Chapter two. Timothy. My dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. That's like a model of a discipleship program. You know, if that can be handed on... Um, from one reliable person to the next, from that reliable person to the next. And that's just a beautiful thing. Endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civil life, for they cannot, for then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. Athletes cannot win the prize unless they follow the rules. 
And heart workers, hardworking farmers should be the first to enjoy the fruit of, of their labor. Think about what I am saying. The Lord will help you understand all these things. Verse 8. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. And because I preach this good news, I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal. But the word of God cannot be chained. So I am willing to endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory to Jesus Christ, to those who, ha who God has chosen. This is a trustworthy saying. If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure hardship, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. He cannot deny who he is. Those are, that's a verse that seems like it might just fit about any situation. Sometimes I'm in situations with the world and people I work for and stuff that I don't really know just what answer to give. Like, there I am thinking it'd be a good opportunity, but I'm just blank. Like, it seems this might be a good just to kind of freeze it in our minds. And it would apply to some of those situations. Remind everyone about these things and command them in God's presence, presence to stop fighting over words. Such arguments are useless and they, they can ruin those who hear them. Okay, so, so that would be another point. Remind everyone about these things was something Timothy was supposed to, to keep encouraging as he was there wherever he was, possibly in Ephesus. Remind that if we if we die with him, we will live with him. If we endure hardship, we will reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. That's a way more weighty thing to consider and, and have in our minds all the time than than having this other thing, uh, fighting over words. And that's just what it says. Stop striving. Let me see what the King James says. That they strive not about words to no profit. So, the encouragement is stay away from words of no profit and think on these words. <clears throat> Verse 15. Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. It's that popular verse, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then just kind of a repeat of the earlier statement. Avoid worthless, foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior. This kind of talk spreads like cancer. And then I have a star that says it could also be gangrene. As is the case of Hymenaeus and Philetus. They have left the path of truth, claiming that the resurrection of the dead has already occurred. In this way, they have turned some people away from the faith. But God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his, and all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. Verse 20, In a wealthy house, some utensils are made of gold and silver, some are made of wood, clay, the expensive utensils are used for special occasions and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean. You will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lusts. Instead, pursue righteous living faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with a pure, with pure hearts. We should find ourselves in fellowship with, with, uh, with people with pure hearts. 
and then somewhere here it says what to not don't find company with this thing though again I say don't get involved in foolish ignorant arguments that only start fights a servant of the Lord must not quarrel but must be kind to everyone be able to teach to be patient with difficult people gently instruct those who oppose the truth perhaps God will change these people's hearts and they will learn the truth then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap. For they have been held captive by him to do whatever he, he wants. I thought somewhere in there there was something about staying away from such people. Maybe we'll get to it. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. People will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scuffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving, unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless and puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Oh, here it is. Stay away from people like that. <clears throat> they are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by various desires. Parentheses. These people are forever following new teachings, but they, these women are forever following new teachings, but they never are able to understand the truth. These teachers, now it's talking about the teachers to stay away from again. These teachers oppose the truth just like Janus and Chambres opposed Moses. They have depraved minds and a counterfeit faith, but they won't get away with this for long. Someday, everyone will recognize what fools they are just as was Janus and Chambres. Um, maybe someone has the, has the story of them. I don't, I, I usually can't find exactly what that was that they were doing that was so bad. But you, Timothy, certainly know what I teach and how I live and what my purpose in life is. You know my faith, my patience, my love, my endurance. You know my much persecution and suffering. I have endured. You know all about how I was persecuted in Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, but the Lord rescued me from all of it. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil people and impostors will flourish. They will deceive others and will themselves be deceived. But you must remain faithful in the things you have been taught. You know they are true for you. No, you can trust those who taught you. And remember there, he might not be just referring to himself, but it um, seemed like Timothy had a godly upbringing with, with a, a godly grandmother and a godly mother. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. Chapter 4 I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when He appears to set up His kingdom, Preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ear wants to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myth. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. As for me, 
My life always has always been poured out as in as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the wraith. I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. And then Paul's final words. <clears throat> Timothy, please come as soon as you can. Demas has deserted me because he loves the things of his life and has gone to Th Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, and Titus has gone to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Bring Mark with you when you come, for he will be helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychias to Ephesus. When you come, when you come, be sure to bring the coat I left at Carpus at Troas. Also bring my books and especially my papers. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm, but the Lord will judge him for what he has done. Be careful of him, for he fought against everything we said. The first time I was brought before the judge, no one came with me. Everyone abandoned me. May it not be, accounted, be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and gave me strength so that I might preach the good news in its entirety for all the Gentiles to hear. And he rescued me from death. Yes, the Lord will deliver me from every evil attack and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. All glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Greet, give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila and those living in the household of Ansiparas, Aristus, Aristus stays in, stayed in Corinth, and I left Trophimus sick at Mil Miltus. Do your best to get here before winter. Eubulus sends you greetings, so does Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. May the Lord be with your spirit, and may his grace be with you all. Just um, a letter there I wanted to read to you. And just feel free to share any thoughts you might have from it or cor corrections needs to be made. Amen. Thanks, Brother Atley. It's, <clears throat> it's not really a devotion when you read God's Word. It's just a, it's, it's, it's a blessing. And may we uh, uh, so we ascribe or achieve to it. May we... Uh, well, just may we uh, cherish it in our hearts and try to live it. Um, something like Philippians, Second Timothy, was written when Paul was uh, having a comfortable vacation, Leroy. He was really enjoying it on the river, Mediterranean Riviera and living it up, eating the finest of foods and everything. Where was Timothy when he wrote this? Like Philippians. In jail, right? In prison. Not the best food. Not the best company. And, you know, he probably, I, if I was in jail a long time, I would despair of my life. I'm saying, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to go. I mean, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to eat mice and <laughs> I don't know what they put in the food there and, and all that. But, I mean, he wrote that. Something like Philippians. Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. And so when we have tribulations and problems in our little life here, and, uh, well, no one's had it this bad. I'm telling you, boy, if, if they, they... They're rejoicing, and I'm just encouraging us all to rejoice. Count of blessings. Again, I say rejoice. Last night, coming home from work, I saw a big bonfire. I guess they got the, the burn being off, at least in the Osho they did. And I saw it. These big, they, two or three of them, big fires and flames. And I'm saying, that's, wow. I says, uh, it, was, it was really something. And uh, I was saying, yeah, you know, some of the early Christians, any Anabaptists, they threw them in the fire. And uh, they weren't afraid. I know a lot of them recanted, like in Michael Sattler. Uh, 21 were brought before the, before the council there for the, when they come, Bergenmaster or the whatever. And uh, 15 recanted. Oh, I don't know the guy. I don't know Jesus. I, no, I'll, I'll go back to the state church. You know, Zwingli, you're cool. And Calvin, you're cool. Uh, Basie, you're cool. Farrell, you're cool. Luther's cool. But six of them said no. And uh, Michael Sattler and his wife, and they... They, uh, some of them were burned, like Sattler, and some of them they drowned. But 
It's an encouragement. Let's not fear. If we if it comes to that, you know, let's 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 be ready to to give our life. But I was just thinking that would I like to go in that fire? And my back was kind of hurting, Leroy and Buddy, and I said, I wouldn't mind going in the, in the fire with a bad back. But anyway, I know I don't want to go in the fire. But one other comment. Uh, you mentioned about the uh, riches uh, out there or something. I think it's twice, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe three times, when Jesus goes out to tell his disciples the limited commission or even the greater one, uh, he says, take no stave, no money back, no silver or gold. And so Why? You know, I mean, isn't that, don't they know how to make friends and influence pe people, how to build churches? I mean, that's how you, 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 the rice Christians, you give them money and you give them rice and then you give them the gospel. Just the opposite. They went with no money, no silver, no great clothes, and they just went in and they preached the word. And that's, it still applies to us. So are we active soldiers or are we comfortable vacationers? And I believe that we are active soldiers, and, and, and let us strive together. Love you, brethren. The Lord be magnified. Thank you, Brother Atley. Um, I just wanted to share a thought that somebody shared with me years ago. I thought it could be encouraging. Let's see. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Um, the, the brother shared with me years ago how, um, where it says, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ because it's in the context of finding faithful men. He was kind of bringing out how <clears throat> possibly it's saying because there aren't a lot of faithful men out there, you have to really, you have to endure that. And it's hard because you go out and you, you know, you witness and you share the truth with so many people. And it's really a blessing, but not many people actually have ears to hear. And so it's kind of a, it's a hardness that you have to endure, you know, continually putting yourself out there to share God's word. And, and not many people being responsive or actually giving heed to what you're sharing with them. It's, it's one of the things we have to endure in this fight. And I just thought it was encouraging. I just wanted to share that. God bless you.
Shine.